There's more. Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer. I swear, this situation keeps getting worse more and so much more so i took it upon myself to reach out to orbro studio and the way i did that was that i went into the sonic omens discord server and left a message asking some questions regarding what i feel were the more sensitive topics the Patreon, John Rice, Samichkin, the voice actor of Eggman, the giveaway, and last night I received said response, but this is where it gets insane. There's another document. <laughs> um, I received some messages that were directly sent to me via email, but I think this one takes the cake and i took some glimpses of it last night and i think i'm just gonna say it right here and now orbital studios they are on some hot deep water right now because now we have what this document says extra information regarding orbital studios and they're written in all caps do not harass anyone mentioned here you have been warned this document also isn't meant to be a grand takedown against Ouroboros, just a collection of extra information. So I think after this, um, I think it is morally correct to take everything that Ouroboros Studio does with uh, what they say a grain of salt. So exercise the utmost caution when being exposed to what they do and what they put out. And for anyone that has not played Sonic Omens, I just want to let you off with a warning right here and now. If you have not played the game yet, Yet, which you can download for free on game jolt i must implore you to exercise caution when playing the game because i can't speak for your experience i can't speak for anyone's experience i can only tell you what i know and what i experience through my exposure and my exposure of the game is it starts off great but then it slowly declines as you go and the morality of the situation with this studio has been declining as well with Farkle, with his friend Poncho, and now with this. And even though Orbro Studios attempted to address the allegations, the user by the name of Poncho said otherwise. So now we have this one. Hello, I'm Wildberry. This document was created with the intent of storing extra information and evidence regarding Orbro Studios' history. I will update this document as new information is discovered. If you have any information of your own to send me, then you can do so through Discord or Twitter direct messages this is not a general debunk orbital studios response document if that's what you're looking for a poncho also known as fewer jester made a very comprehensive document debunking orbital's response which i'll link here and i'll also link the same document and this one that i'm reading right now in the description so you can read it for yourself Though something I want to quickly acknowledge before going any further is that the screenshot of the description of the Sun in 2020 episode White Jungle, I'll cut to his video that was in Poncho's document, Poncho didn't show the release date. Though I took a screenshot that does, providing that yes, this video was released in February of 2020, long before Farkle ever got involved in this situation. Here is that screenshot, and there's a screenshot right there. Sonic Omens episode White Jungle, all cutscenes by Bolt, February 15th. 2020. The reason why the video title says Sonic Omen instead of Sonic 2020 is because Bolt changed the name of the video, presumably when the game was rebranded. So he actively updated the video when the official name came out. So yeah, he was releasing builds as the game was being released. So piece by piece on Patreon and then piece by piece on YouTube and Bolt is still doing that I'm showing off older builds of the game in the channel so it could be some developer insight on that but I also find it interesting that he's releasing builds to begin with now I'm not saying that in the sense that it could be used against him but what I'm basically saying is that developers don't really release previous builds before you know the game they put out is the game they want to put out so for him to release builds I wish they had that kind of transparency when they put it in the document so they can address allegations in a more mature fashion. To start, here's a bit of unprofessionalism on Bolt's part on how Venturu, the original voice for Shadow, was placed. Originally, I was supposed to voice Sonic, but my mic wasn't going to arrive in time. I didn't feel bad about it. It made sense after all. 
He wasn't about to wait like a month for me to get the money to afford a new mic, and I understood that. Then he reached out to me to do Shadow, and I told him my mic would be arriving in two days. He said okay, and that I had the roll. Then two days later, when I got it, I told him I was ready to start. He then informs me that I was replaced within two days. So he got replaced when the mic arrived, from the looks of it. Taking from Splash Dash's video, let's keep in mind that Bolt told Vinteru that she had the role, then replaced her without fucking warning her about it. And yet, I seen John Rise lie about it, claiming that she never was going to have the role, she was just a potential candidate. Even though, allegedly, Vince demo tapes that she recorded for her audition are in the game's files, they were lightly removed in later versions for the sake of cover up, like something else I'll mention later, but they probably were in the version 3.0.0. Okay, so this 3.0. 2.0 cover this because I didn't really see any reason for that game to be updated if they were gonna fix the game but according to the document the previous document that I read they intentionally made the game harder which that's something I'll never comprehend the game is already difficult as is they should have eased up with the hazards, but instead of doing that, I think that they just doubled down on difficulty, and I can't really say for certain because I've only played the game once, so I have seen other people play the game, and it looks like that the biggest problem that people have with it either is the camera, the controls, or just the replayability. But uh, either way, um, if they're making the game difficult on purpose, and they're trying to cover something up with the new update, then there's more happening with this studio with this game than we were exposed to. Then after she called Bolt out of his shady Patreon, he and quite a bit of the team said that her only personality trait is that she's trans. This is of course transphobic. I called him out and he and his developers went to the Russian channel of his old Discord server and started saying things like Vin's only personality trait is that she's trans and things like that. Taking from Nitpicker's second video on Omens, update, I found a message showing proof of what she said about being replaced. My mic finally came in, what lines do you need? Hey y'all, I already found guys who will voice, thanks for writing. That's it, really? Mind you, this is less transphobic than something else I've seen that refers to Vin. Here's a part of the previous statement where they throw season 3 under the bus. And for those who don't know, season 3 are the people who are making the fan animation for season 3 of Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Sonic 7am. 5 if you believe this crap, then how about you also go ask Team Season 3, third season of Sonic 7am, and me too, Sonic villains about their Patreon pages and how they compete with Sega, which together with Netflix are now making Sonic Prime. There is no difference here. Sega is a multimedia company, but it's only Sonic Omens that receives this drama again and again, despite never having sold a single copy of the game to anyone. Sega hasn't made any money from any Sonic related animation project since Night of the Warehog 2008, and even then, the money made was pretty small thanks to it being YouTube ad revenue. Team Season 3 had also said that all donations go directly to the project's budget, while Ouroboros Studio are not nearly as forward about this. You mentioned their questionable Patreon on their server, you get the band hammer. Okay, so even Season 3 is getting some budgeting okay not an entrepreneur i'm just gonna throw that out right now obviously i'm not deep into economics but there needs to be like a certain limit of what is considered permissible when it comes to funding fan projects based on ips that people do not create or own because i feel like that when money gets involved that presents a problem like money is quite possibly the most problematic substance on planet earth especially when it's dedicated to projects based on ips that were not created by the people in question so for me money just makes a situation more complicated than it already is what is team season three we are a team of professionals and fans bringing closure to our beloved sat am all proceeds from fan investors go directly to the production the pilot will not monetize in any way this is for fans by fans who love Sonic. Thank you for supporting season 3. Take it from Spin Dash's video on Omens, hence the gradient on the bottom. Bolt has, as you know, blocked anyone on Twitter, I refuse to call it X because fuck Musk, <laughs> who dare critiques Omens. Self-explanatory, a lot of YouTubers who have criticized the game such as Splash Dash or Nitpicker have confirmed that they released their first videos covering the game that were blocked by Bolt on Twitter. So even when you try to consult 
anyone from Orbro Studios about the game, they don't want to hear a word of it, and they'll just flat out block you. I seem to recall back in Orbro's document that they claimed that Farkle showed up with malicious intent, but the big question for that is what will be the driving force for anyone to show up in that Discord server and start spouting nonsense because people don't do that without a reason, okay? Because people who show up and just do anything stupid without a reason, that's just pure ignorance. And pure ignorance is something that should never be tolerated, no matter what. John Rice threw Tracker TD under the bus after the Mania Team's Discord got raided. Three months during long nights between my primary job days, I work hard as I can on Sunday 2020 music, but because some angry Twitter pussies can't check actual information, whole project got undeserved troubles, including me. Okay, so I do remember this. This was in, I think it was the Fargo document. It was okay when people noticed an incorrect description of Patreon and asked us about it, but when people began to blame us of illegally and shout out insults, it became not okay. When the description was changed, but people were still scream angry, it still wasn't okay. But when people smash entire 4K person Discord community in toxic attack, it becomes totally madness. Three months during long nights being primary job days, I work hard as I can on Sonic 2020 music, but because some angry Twitter pussies can't check extra information, whole project got undeserved troubles, including me. Honestly, I'm not sure that I want to work with community that allows this toxicity to exist and ruin the reputation of people which making content with love for fans. I'm sorry, but as long as people like Tracker TD can create this wave of hatred and others can level freely, will be no place for artists who really know how to do their job and fans will not see quality content. So now your turn, community, what do you prefer? And then we have him basically assaulting yeah, Tracker TD here. Congratulations, Tracker TD. Thanks to your efforts, people are suffering undeservably. Taken from Farkle's document, I'm pretty sure you can tell why this is wrong. Tracker TD has absolutely zero involvement in the raid of the Mania Team Discord. Debatably, the game's intro was plagiarized by Marvel Spider-Man. You've got to be kidding. I made this clip myself, when you actually watch both of them back to back, you can notice similarities, but it's debatable if this is anything incriminating or not. Okay, I just saw them back to back and I can see the influences that they put in their intro cutscene. The camera angle moving from an open window to the character sleeping, I guess, uh, the sticky notes, the, the smartphone, the whiteboard and notebook notes uh photographs yeah so i don't know if that's them being influenced to make the scene that they did but as stated here it's debatable so i don't know if i would go so far to say that this was plagiarism but more so that this was just a way to open up the game because breaking this down we start off with some books laying around and one of the items that Tails picks up from Sonic Adventure. The smartphone rumbles with a green hill background. There's a chili dog, a sticky note that says, do not forget to optimize. Photos of Sonic's friends and Sonic and Chip and Apatos and then Sonic and Chris. Uh, there's a plant and then a whiteboard that has schematics of a hyper tornado. That's some other things laying around like a computer and Sonic shoes. 
a challenge space poster and that leads up to Sonic um, sleeping. Whereas with Marvel Spider-Man which came out in 2018 opens up with the window with a spider hanging out and some pictures of I think Peter's family and some areas of New York and that's him and his auntie with comic books laying around, drawings and a notebook and some tools, uh, money jars, a uh, magazine article, a uh, laptop that's running a program, um, news articles, sticky notes all over the place and then that all leads up to the smartphone waking Peter up about a police report. So definitely some similarities here but I don't suspect plagiarism from this at all. For me personally it just feels like how they're trying to open up the scene where you just see what's lying around in the, the room in question and then leads up to Sonic sleeping and then Tails enters the scene. Similarly enough, um, no police report, but there is a gun report about Eggman going after a Chaos Diamond in a temple. So very similar to each other, but what I find I'll call this plagiarism, I don't think so. So yeah, it could be debatable, but I think that's something that Orbo Studios will need to clean up. Now, as a whole, I think the most important question to ask is what compelled this team, this Russian studio, to make a Sonic game? A fan-made 3D Sonic game. What actually compelled them to make this? Like, what was the reason? Because, as we'll see later on, it could have been out of spite, or maybe they do like Sonic and they wanted to make something for the fans the best way possible because you have a game that takes place after the events of Sonic X, specifically Season 3, and Sonic Unleashed. And they're combining both of those elements in this game. I really want to know what compelled them to make a game like this. Why they made the game like this. And that's not out of frustration or just out of detestment. No, that's just out of curiosity at that point. Why did they decide to make a Sonic game and why they made the game the way that they did? I think that's more intriguing now because after all of this, I think we need to get to the core of the problem. Why did Orworld Studio want to make a Sonic game? To me, that's the most important question. They haven't updated the giveaway thing since March of 2023. Due to the situation in the world, we have not yet been able to find a legal way to purchase and transfer any of the Sega products. We have reserved this $10 until such an opportunity occurs. Unfortunately, these are circumstances that we cannot change. The situation that led to them being unable to do this giveaway was Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine, but they couldn't do it from the start due to Russia being sanctioned by the United States because of said invasion starting five months before they even announced the giveaway. They should have known that they couldn't do this and instead not claim the ad money, but they claimed it anyway. Update, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will likely end pretty soon, judging by this video on TikTok right here. Ukraine has won and Russia has conceded defeat in the naval war. Ukraine, who notably doesn't have a navy, has forced Russia to withdraw its remaining fleet from Crimea to occupy Georgia, reportedly sinking or damaging over half of the Black Sea fleet's warships, including a submarine, which resulted in the fleet being declared functionally inactive. And this is pretty devastating for Russia because warships are some of the most expensive assets a country has. I mean, they take a decade to make and even longer to make operation. And now you have experts at the Atlantic Council saying that this proves that Russia's threats and red lines are empty. Or Ukraine was supposed to be nuked and launched into outer space, but instead, Putin quietly ordered his forces to retreat after a humiliating defeat. And earlier this year, it flew under the radar, but Ukraine broke Russia's blockade of the Black Sea, allowing imports and exports to flow freely. So, with all that said, I think it's becoming more likely that they could be able to perform this giveaway, because if the battle really is ending soon, then they should make any preparations possible to do this giveaway so they can hold up their end of the promise that they made and again they should have been aware of what it is they could have done and what they couldn't do according to what was happening outside because they should have been aware of what's happening outside of their operations regardless if it related to them or not because this battle really is affecting russia and ukraine in such a way that they can't do anything outside their country again russia could not attend this year's olympics they were banned. So that tells me that there are some borders in Russia that are closed to the point where they can't even travel outside of their own country. So in a way, I think Russia was a lot tight and they could barely do much of anything. 
Now, that's pretty likely that the sanctions will go away soon. It's just a matter of if they'll stay true to their word or not, and that is the most important part. I don't know much about ads on Game Jolt, but they collected ad revenue according to them because they didn't know about the ads. So they should have known what Game Jolt was before they even considered listing Sonic Gomez in that. And now that they have this money, which according to Poncho, they didn't have to do, but they did it anyway. Now they have this $10 that they don't know what to do with, or maybe they know how to use it, but they can't use it according to what's been happening. So the money is just sitting with them and they can't do anything with it, at least not yet. But it all depends on them if they want to stay true to their word about this giveaway. Because first it was Sonic Origins, then they changed it to Sonic Frontiers. I wouldn't be surprised if this Sonic game came out and they decided to devote their attention to that. And now they have like more content that needs to be released. So the weight is just going to get heavier and heavier as time goes on. The Gaia Whip Hooks in Child Paradise used to have a QR code that led to their Patreon when scanned. Removed as of Omens version 3.2.0 or maybe 3.0.1. And this is what I mentioned uh, last time. They put a QR code in one of the levels and when scanned, the QR code takes you to the Patreon page. And I took that as a method of them really trying to get people to pledge money to their Patreon page. If they're gonna go so far as to add a QR code in game i don't think i've ever seen any game that did that before where they put a qr code in the game itself and then here it is right here and then yeah we got another post here strange no one talked about the hidden qr code in sonic omens video proof or scanning yourself you can also see this in the cutscene before the level since many videos of the cutscene are on the initial release of episodes 5 6 and 7 so now they're even in the cutscenes okay that's even worse they still have an animation of a meta drone which they do not own on their patreon showing they still haven't learned shit <sighs> Again, if it's original content, that's fine. If it's existing content, then no. They should have known better than to list any assets that wasn't originally created by them. The studio doesn't care about their loyal fans calling them mindless hamsters that will swallow anything. And here's a post right here. I worked with Ouroboros for a while, years ago, and people in charge were always assholes. Disrespecting fans behind the scene, calling them mindless hamsters that will swallow anything. It finally showed to the wider public through Sonic Omens, and they still are disgusting. Then I go back to my question. What compelled them to make a Sonic fan game if they're going to behave like this? Treating their employees like garbage, calling Sonic fans mindless hamsters that will swallow anything. Like, personally, I would never call people, you know, what Orbo is calling them because people have their own reasons for sticking to the franchise, you know, no matter how busted it is. So, them making a Sonic game and then saying what I'm seeing here, it almost just feels contradictory because you're making this game and then you're calling people mindless hamsters who just swallow anything like what's even the point then does orbital studio even like sonic like do they even like the franchise or anything because they went out of the way to make all of these assets and all of the sketches and pieces of music inspire ripped off or just original and then they have the nerve to do this like who was the one responsible for making such comments the overall morality here questionable at best and at its worst at least because questionable because you can't help but ask questions but you can't help but feel some resentment towards them like you just want nothing to do with them because no one is going to go anywhere near a company doesn't matter what it is if the morality sucks they want nothing to do with them and that's what i'm seeing here people in charge were always assholes disrespecting fans behind the scenes labeling or both as disgusting is what it says here shadows va said both that the game was finished out of spite and that the knuckles dlc that was planned was canceled for spiteful reasons as well we just don't want to deal with sonic fan base any longer i don't blame you to be honest, you should have done it just out of spite. We have finished the project out of spite. The haters failed their mission to cancel us. Game over. Now we're on top of the world. Fucking trending all over Twitter. Ticket from Bali Bali Sonic Omis was finished out of spite video due to added context. And yeah, this is where I constantly kept saying out of spite. This is where it originated. Also true, the fan base canceled indirectly the DLC. I don't know if it would cost money either, so we can't really know about this. 
The only mention of the DLC was in Sonic Omen's server. From what I recall, we planned to make a DLC, but because of the disrespect and the hate, we canceled it from Humanarian or someone along these lines. We'll never know if they were going to make us pay for it or not. And this was in the Sonic Show's video. Believe it or not, Bolt originally had it so that his team would not work on part of an episode until a dollars per month goal on his Patreon was met. So now they're blaming the fans, according to this, blaming the fans for hatred that they received and because they weren't pledging money on Patreon. So I'm actually thinking back about when they said Farkle just joined the Discord server out of malice and to spread toxicity when uh, Poncho said otherwise. All right, and then we have the little screenshot of the donation goal here. Having reached this amount, we begin to develop the episode White Jungle for character Shadow. Taken from Splash Dash's video, this is either referring to the ability to play a shadow in levels in the White Jungle episode or referring to the gun arsenal level. In the Ding Funk Mania Team Discord server, Bolt stored the game's files, which isn't a problem. What is a problem is that Bolt put pirated IDW Sonic comics and said discord server as one is lying about the project's cancellation the best part of this game is that they stored the files on a discord server i was in and the server got raided and then deleted and both says sunday 2020 was canceled a week or two after i'm kind of shocked the game is back oh yeah also on the server he uploaded basically pirated sonic idw comics just kind of thought that was funny that's crazy okay Found on Splash Dash is the problem with Sonic Fan Games video. Uh, and then we got something here, and, and I think what circle here is most important. Second, we talk about the re uploads of the IDW comics that you guys upload on the old server. This is not how you support IDW and Sega, and instead supporting piracy. Oh my god, okay. Something else I was not abbreviated to was the fact that now they're pirating comics and then they're putting it like why would you even that's something like no that no uploading pirated content okay that's a lawsuit if anything in my book because the moment that you start uploading pirated material that's when legal issues get involved okay you cannot upload anything pirated on any part of the internet i mean just to get this out the way i personally do not condone piracy but i understand why people do it but they need to do it on their own terms do not spread pirated material on the internet because that encourages other people to access that pirated material and use it for themselves. Then legal issue is going to get involved and then DMCA notices are going to be handed out like candy. This is very problematic. So I will not understand the motivation behind even posting pirated content about anything. This next bit is actually in Ouroboros' favor rather than against them. Game Jolt, for some stupid reason, automatically enables ads no matter what kind of game it is, even if it's a fan game. Additionally, don't get me wrong from the devlog below, I do not want the money. You should have make money off of fan games but the fact that game jolt is profiting off of them in mass is fucked up so this site automatically enables ads on fan games even though they say you can't monetize fan games and after your fan game gets enough views they reroute that money to themselves i think it's safe to say i plan to move updates to interest something this absolutely makes the fact that they ran ads on sonic omen's game jolt page less questionable but they still claim the money so it's still fucked up and illegal so when you post anything on Game Jolt, ads are automatically enabled, which is weird because the website should just give you an option if you want to enable ads or not. And despite that, and claiming the money from what I read is optional. You do not have to claim this money. And personally, I can't really say because I never used Game Jolt before for anything other than just accessing fan games like Sonic Omens. But if you do have the option to claim money, meaning that the money isn't just automatically transferred to whatever account that you added to the site, which is most likely how they managed to collect the money in the first place, because I can't imagine that you can just collect money and that money just doesn't go anywhere. Like the money you had to go to a PayPal or to your credit card, banking account, something. And I think in this case, it went to a PayPal because the money was in the PayPal. And according to the last document, that's where the money was and they couldn't get it out for some reason. Possibly what's going on with the invasion as stated previously. So the fact that they intentionally collected money based off of a fan game, I think this is 
I don't know if this will warrant a legal case from Sega, but I think after everything they've done, character-wise, that could be a potential lawsuit right there because they're treating people who work with them like garbage. They're acting unprofessional. They're flat out disrespecting people who are contributing to this development. Rather you be a music composer or an artist or a voice actor. This team could get sued for all of that but how that would happen i am not entirely sure so here's another thing to debunk the whole dragon of the edge thing well as debunking or bro's response isn't the main focus of this document i found a piece of info that's just too crucial to ignore they listed dragon of the edge and another how to train your dragon related project on their instagram as one of their projects dragons revival of the night dragons of the edge taken from webster's video which i highly recommend you go watch Oh wow. Checkpoint section. Here are all the videos I source from so far. These are all the mentions and sources in this document. And I think on my own time, I will be looking at Webster's video of it, why you can't monetize fan games, so that way I can have more cleared in the situation. I will link Farkle's enlisted video, but I doubt that he's proud of it, so I won't. If you really want to see it, go look at Ouroboros as well as document, which links it directly. If you want to know where my stance on the Cars 2 music thing comes from, I highly recommend checking out this video by Relax Alex. I've actually heard of him before, and I'll be seeing that in my own time. New information collected here starting from August of 2024. In Ouroboros' response, they claimed that Farkle was the one to accuse John Rice of stealing Area 99's theme from Cars 2 when he wasn't actually the one to make said accusation in the first place. While it is true that Farkle was the one to make the accusation public, he was actually informed of this through someone telling him such on his Discord. Someone posted it here is a remix of a song from Cars 2 the video game, uses the exact same composition, just different instruments which is a violation of copyright law as music copyright is for the composition, not the instruments. So I've had a little thought, did John Rice get permission from Karma Cartel, who I will call Karm for short, to use his and Karm's original track World Has Gone Insane and Sonic Omens for the Maria boss? I've left a comment on John's music video for the track for the game. I'd be suspicious if it gets deleted. If he gives a definitive answer, I'll show it here. And I've talked about the Cars 2 thing. I just couldn't make heads or tails of it, but there were some minor instances where I did hear some similarities between the two tracks. But ultimately, I didn't think that it was him ripping off the soundtrack. And Orbrose did state that they have similar feels okay i actually went back to the orbros response here and then it says one of our music composers john rice has been accused of stealing the soundtrack from cars to the video game first and foremost we would like to focus on the legal aspects of the accusation before being accepted by the label by the distributor and being successfully published on each streaming service and store each musical track undergoes several checks for containing any copyright parts taking into account that area 99 is still available on spotify itunes youtube and other platforms as well as the fact that the first accusation of plagiarism has been voiced by Farco more than a year ago, it's safe to assume that the legal system hasn't found any copyright violation of John's track, and I think this might be because of the composition, because if it hasn't caught it, then chances are that it was rearranged in such a way that the copyright system didn't pick it up. Now, that's not me saying that they intentionally remix a piece of soundtrack just to make it sound different so that way they wouldn't get away with it but from what i'm reading here this to me comes off as actually it goes on to say here fargo claims that john changed the instruments and claimed that the song was original according to them the only thing john made was changing the instruments and leaving everything else the same as in the oil red track let's try and see if that's true each track can be split into three parts melodies rhythm dynamics instruments genre and then melodies that's why a couple of musical solutions and chosen tonality key being the same each melody in both tracks develops in its own way and then we have a little screenshot right here about the note progression so any similarities with oil rig found in area 99 or within game conventions common electric guitar techniques and melody progressions of this genre rhythm dynamics despite the fact that both tracks can be described as action music their beats per minute 
numbers and rhythmic patterns are different. Overall, dynamics are also not the same. Area 99 gives more fast, tough, and aggressive vibes because Sonic is breaking through a military compound. Instruments genre, both tracks are done in the same rock genre, which means the main instruments are the same. Live drums, bass guitar, and a couple of electronic guitars. And then they go on to point the finger at Farkle here. Uh, it says that they said John James' instruments when the main instruments are literally the same. They said that the melody and rhythm weren't changed. They were. That can't be called an expert opinion. In our opinion, is merely another excuse to hate on the team. And I don't know if I would call it hate, but I think it is noticeable for musicians out there. Now, I can't say for certain about this. I'm not, I am no musician, but and i brought this up before where i heard music just similar to one another so music sounding similar is not that rare as i once thought you know heck even some music even uses sound samples but the world has gone insane i can definitely hear similarities between that and the music that plays when shadow fights maria So I think the world has gone insane similarly is more noticeable than Oil Rig from Cars 2 is. So I think that Cars 2 was the start of it and then there was this chain reaction of listening to music that was either ripped off, plagiarized, or inspired. And other composers from the team have gotten in touch with um, I think Poncho about other music that was ripped off according to them so i think it's safe to say that the biggest culprits here are this um john rice fellow the joh guy uh people who run the discord server you know all of that so they're in hot water as it is and now they're gonna find themselves you know even deeper than before this message in particular i recall from the email that i received so yeah hold on did you get permission from karma cartel to use his track in omens while this is a track that you did work on it's better to have permission with the person you collaborated with before you repurpose a collaborative work for something else update john hasn't replied but due to me being on the omens discord he tagged me and showed me the comment this is a little suspicious, but currently there's not enough evidence to make an accusation. Update, John has replied, here it is, and this, I remember, is what was sent to me. And I think John Rice, according to all the messages from Twitter, YouTube, and Discord, might be the worst out of this. And this response that I read last night, I, I was in disbelief when I read this. Hey, I hope you realize that my response is going to be a bit harsh because you yourself set the tone for this dialogue by asking a question that implies that I'm a dishonest piece of shit who has absolutely no respect for other people's work, looking for profit from anything possible, probably including selling my own mother. What? Or at least selling one of my best friends of the past 20 years, which Karma Cartel is. I realize that you guys have more trust in a random schoolboy than in people who freely gave the world a game that has been enjoyed by tens of thousands of people, but still this distrust has some logical limit, otherwise we'll end up with questions of did you get permission from Sonic fans to breathe category, again, what? I mean, with all due respect to you guys as players, such questions are none of your business. You are not Sega and you are not the authors of any content related to us you do not and cannot have any legal issues with our activities it is not in your authority or responsibility if you have a concern that there has been an offense there are plenty of administrative authorities where you can report it who by the way will do their job better than all of you put together 
it will be much better than annoying people with such stupid questions. In the end, yes, Karma Cartel is aware and happy that our track is an omen. Moreover, he supports me and the rest of the development team against all the madness you guys started here. Okay, why didn't he just sum it up by saying, yes, this person was aware and they're grateful that the track is in there. Instead, he went on this whole rant. Like, permission from Sony fans to breathe? Like, what is this? Like, all this person was trying to, was saying that if you got permission to use this track or not, it is out of worry and concern because if this track was supposed to be used by any other purpose and this John Rice fellow was using this track for purposes that his colleagues were not aware of, then that can present a potential problem. He needs to know and consider that. People who make rash decisions like that often get into these disputes that honestly they could have easily just not get themselves into had they been concerned about the people that he collaborated with okay i know people like to just jump in and do things without anyone else's consent but when you're working with a company like this that makes all of these creations for a specific purpose it'll come off as a knife in the back when they realize that the work that they created is for something else that they weren't aware of and that's the lesson here. It was out of worry and concern. At least that's the feeling that I get from this. And then John Rice is being openly hostile about it. And just, I, I think he might be, and this is me personally saying, I think this John Rice guy might be the worst person on the team. After all of the copyright claims, after all of the messages, on social media and now that i'm seeing this i think he might be one to keep a close eye on like that's pretty much how antagonistic he's coming off on so we have a definitive answer yes but san answer was delivered in the most immature and childish way possible is it a coincidence that this is just after i left the omas discord john was recently caught removing credit for paul shortino on metal amber's theme John Rice is now blocking people calling him out for removing Paul Shrontino's name from the credits on his song Metal Supremacy. He is notorious for altering and publishing other people's music for profit. And um, yeah, that's where all the allegations for all the ripped out music were coming from. This also goes for E-Zero's theme, which I presume is taken from Ed Dragoon's theme, which I have posted in the last response that I made regarding when I was reading uh, Poncho's document. <sighs> Like, it just keeps getting worse. And it's just mostly this John Rice person that's causing all of this. Like, that's what's happening here. It's mostly just this person that I keep hearing about, that I'm reading about. Using two songs with the same BPM and different melodies within it is not the same as directly taking and modifying a melody from another composer and listing yourself as the sole writer of the song on Spotify. Be real, Paul Shortino and Tomoya Otani deserve credits. If they're the original composers, then yes, they are. And John Rice himself has made shorts of alternating tracks and just making a new track out of it. That's what happened with Metal Supremacy, and that's what happened with E Zero. And he did put his brand name on those videos himself. All of that was according to him. So he doesn't have the right to call people out for any misdeeds when it's literally him performing all of the misdeeds in the public's eye he's posting this on the internet note for note shot for shot also if you still are convinced that area 99's theme is taken from cars 2 then listen to x pulse comparison all the way instead of just the intro
and this is just me personally saying this, I think I know what the biggest problem with this is between Air 99 and Cars 2, and I'm just gonna say it's the tone, because the tone is what I've been noticing between these two tracks. I don't think it's the instruments, even though they're similar. The melodies are similar, but I think the overall problem with this is the tone and how these were composed because I'm listening to how both of these tracks start off and how they go about with their intense melodies. And then we get that cool down where the sound becomes more soft and the riffs are more lighter than they were when they started off with their intensity. So it's the overall tone that I'm hearing here is the problem here. Not the instruments, not the melodies, you know is how the melodies were used so if you were to ask me how is area 99 a ripoff of cards to the video game i would say the tone and how they're using these melodies because there is some similarity with that when people say that area 99 is a complete ripoff of cards 2 i think is a ripoff of how cards 2 is composed when it comes to a hammer it's not the size it's how you swing it and how they're swinging air 99 is the same feel of how the music in car 2 was swung and that's what i'm hearing from this and the mashup here is well composed too i gotta say like this is a well put together mashup so that way it not only sounds convincing but i can actually listen to this and not be disturbed by how both tracks just collide with each other like it is well matched up that i can actually listen to it and just have a good time listening to it so the mashup here is not bad at all but on the composition side of things yeah it, this is how it's composed rather than the compositions themselves which is what um or Burles has stated in their response so never mind what they did is how they did it i also managed to recently catch joh using the underverse creators departure announcement as a false equivalency for the entire situation particularly with john rice english underverse 0.8 part 1 might be the last underverse episode i publish i'm done with the toxicity the hypocrisy and the bias i give up trying to explain that i'm not a monster i just wanted to have fun with a video game that made me happy i'm not sure if i'll come back or want to make content on youtube anymore i'll have to take a long break after this find another job i don't know stay away from all this every year is the same thing and i don't feel comfortable in this fandom anymore i'm not mentally okay i'm done pretending all this hate is not affecting me Maybe if I step aside, these people will get the attention they've been wishing for, since there won't be that person in her work they hate so much. I feel I shouldn't have gotten an opportunity in the first place and that they could have done way better. As if this fandom were a competition, or they'll just find another target to turn into a pariah. I'll make an announcement when the trailer for the episode will be released. I gave up trying to explain that I'm not a monster, I just wanted to have fun with a video game that made me happy. Translation done via bill. Minus the underworld because of the bullying of the fandom, what the underworld is Johnny for the past two years, literally. I also managed to catch them getting at me for calling them out on the hyper tornado model being taken and used without credit, as well as them still having animations of metal drones on their Patreon. And this I also remember reading because this is the last one. Honestly, you're right, I should have praised it as used without credit. I know, but stolen is a big word given this model is released publicly for free for everyone to use. In case you weren't aware, Orbro Studios stole this model and used it in Sonic Omens. In later episodes, this model isn't used, but it's still in episode 1 breakthrough. Okay, so they thought I just forgot to remove this model in particular from the cutscene, and they just decided to use their own model for episode 2 onward. Okay, so yeah, does that imply that the Hyper Tornado was changed in the opening of the episode 2 cutscene? Well, as I see, the tornado is being fucked over by random Wildberry, not by one of the creators, and the moment with Metadrone is similar to Zone 99. They didn't fuck up, so it's okay. About Methadrone is some fucking bullshit pumped from the tip of a bitch's hair. This whole project is based on X. If the X authors wanted to kill off Omens, it would have been done a long time ago. And it sure as fuck wasn't because of one fucking Meta X model. I'm so fucking sick of this dumbass six-year-old motherfucker's logic. 
or fucking author shit. If in the credits to specify the authors of all the fucking shit that is, we will have to specify the authors of all te technologies up to electricity and even earlier. It's clear that in the real world, not everything and not always specified and no one is fucking offended except for the fucking Twitter devils who have never had a fucking hand in anything but their own dick in life. And the fruits of their creativity their mothers take away from the garbage on napkins. Sorry about the text getting larger, by the way. So, even though this is open source, I never forget who made this possible in the first place. And once again, John Rice going on another tangent. What is going on with this guy? Like, seriously, this is like... How many tangents has he gone through now? I managed to find the message that shows JLH being transphobic in the Omen server because someone didn't like the game and he uses the R slur in it. Like, what is this? And then, you know, here, JLH, like another person here, you know, an the other, you know, big bad. Translation, I don't like them. Nobody gives a fuck. I don't like them and they make their employees tap. Nobody gives a fuck. They're using monetization inappropriately. Interesting, interest rising. They're racist, interest waning. They're grooming, here's a random bullshit that I think is pedophilia that isn't, but let's hate them all together, all cheering. I've read about 10 scandals in the last year or so. They're all, all the same with these fucking Twitter fucks. Take any controversial project, it's the same. And it's always some little, I'm guessing retard, who's screaming. Who puts autism or Transformers race in his profile. As it turns out, Sonic Omens doesn't even use the exact original Infinity Engine, and instead uses a continuation made by Max and Adam. No credit to say user was given, and this was this I remember was also screenshotted and sent to me in the email. And then here's what that looks like. You can very clearly tell this is a version they use as a base by them not even being asked to change the placeholder UI. The multiplayer winning screen was changed in a patch after someone pointed out how bare it was. And yeah, I'm assuming that the one that says winner loser is the... I'm just gonna say it right now, and I don't think I ever talked about it. The one thing I don't like about the result screen is the fact that it just looks unfinished. Because usually in Sonic games, when you see a result screen, uh, the graphics in that, like the, um, the graphic design in that is way better. Here in Sonic Omens, you just get white text on a black bar and then they don't even do anything fancy with the result screen as a whole it comes off as just a placeholder rather than the finished product so instead of just you know doing what 06 did or unleash or colors i would go so far to say that this looks even worse than a result screen in sonic forces does and sonic forces already just has the most plain result screen that i've seen from any sonic game like so far i think the best looking result screen that i've seen um probably sonic unleashed to be completely honest and then in the credits it says engine creator obon and yeah this was a screenshot taken as proof of the original creators not being created max and adam i've rejoined the omen server and found out that john saw that i left and was amused by it i considered it was an option for a nice dialogue but unfortunately he decided to leave the server after my question am i really that scary well as i knew he is that guy who debunked both document maybe he was scared that he was founded it's no secret to me that it's him after all judging by his nickname he wasn't hiding much but it seems that the scenario you describe happened by the way i suffered more than anyone else writing this document so it's more correct to call it a studio document i mean you know the name of it is oriwara studio's official statement the reason i left was more because i figured out once i actually started using twitter i probably got banned for one reason or another so i left because i had less reason to linger in there and i think that was just good judgment on their part was the reason for staying there if you know people like John Ryan's here are just gonna go on these tangents and just provide toxicity as I've seen but JOH literally has said straight up death threats directed at fewer gesture translation I don't get it what about his pathetic whining about literal child being sued in his next fuck knows what document then another lie to cover himself in public well, it doesn't give a fuck if he is a kid or not. If there's a window of opportunity to skin him, I think we should take it. He's updating and updating the statute of limitations. 
There's just rumors of sanctions being lifted. Nice. Although my bloodlust has subsided a bit a half a year, and I can't take him by the udder. But I do see him jumping all over rice with his fake. Which is funny, but this post definitely amused me to say, uh, it amused both of us. What the hell? I want to thank this person for providing this extra information here. After this, this downright exposes these people for who they are and what they've done. I would go so far to say that these are people that are worth discovering more about and potentially investigating. This could or already has painted them as an enemy to most people. I do not blame anyone for talking about this or investigating this even further and it is morally correct to do so because i don't think like i i've seen companies fuck up to exponential levels whether it be konami how they monitor employees or ea with their loot boxes and trying to defend loot boxes or what's going on with ubisoft right now with Star Wars Outlaws and the new Assassin's Creed game. This right here, combined with all the social media that they have, makes them even worse. From Twitter to Discord to even Instagram. So it is my personal opinion that people have the right to investigate everything about this, even if these people are antagonistic, openly hostile, and are just morally conflicted and could be labeled as frauds like th this what i'm seeing here from disrespecting people with their talents to monetizing aspects of the sony franchise that they don't own downright threatening fans and threatening to cancel parts of the game all the while making the game harder which I was not aware of. Then comes them potentially stealing, whether it be assets or music, and the fact that this person listed all of these videos here. I have never seen a fan game garner this much attention like this, all because of a studio's behavior. This might be the only fan game that I've ever seen anything like this. It's unbelievable. Especially when the backbone of all this is the social media, mostly in the Discord that I'm seeing here. I think to sum it up here, and again going back to the core question here, what compelled this studio to make a Sonic game the way that they did? Like what compelled them to make a Sonic game? It doesn't matter if it was Omens, doesn't matter if it was anything like before and after the sequel or Fallen Star, no, what compelled them to make this? Because now, after reading this and after reading all the previous documents, and even Ouroboros attempt to address the allegations as they did, I didn't even hear anything about um, the voice actor that they laughed at. Okay, the giveaway and laughing at this Michigan guy, all of this, and anything that they could do to make themselves look good. I don't know if time will tell what is going to happen with this studio, but I think it is important to keep a close eye on them and to be aware of who these people are and what they've done and what they're all about. And that's what I'm seeing here. Now, I'm not gonna say that I'm convinced that Ouroboros are the bad guys here. Okay, they have done bad things. Can I label them as bad people? Potentially, yes, I can, but I'm not going to go out of my way to label them completely. I still need to know what the driving force was to make the game that they put out, why they weren't open to criticism, or why they'll flat out just ignore criticism by either banning and blocking people and removing their comments if possible. This is the problem that I'm seeing here, and all of this would have been avoided if they were just open to any criticism of their game if they weren't trying to make money off of this because I've seen developers receive money via donations as they were developing the game and what I'm seeing here they literally try to monetize this game through Patreon and those $10 they got from Game Jolt. I think this team has painted a dark picture for fan games as a whole after everything that took place here and honestly it's very disappointing because all of this wouldn't have been avoided if they simply did not, for one, 
try to gain any monetization. Two, uh, treated their peers and co-workers like absolute garbage, as listed here. And three, did not antagon were not antagonistic against anyone who tried to give them feedback about the game, whether it be positive or negative. Especially negative. You don't get good by avoiding the bad, you get good by learning from the bad. And I think that Ouro Studio is still having a problem with that. Because if people like this John Rice guy or JOH or anyone else is trying to put this game out, all the while treating people like absolute crap, then honestly I see no point developing this game any further. I, I honestly don't. I still don't know why they even made this. Like, I still need a reason for that. So, here we are, still, with built-up allegations, all because this team doesn't know how to behave. And that's the problem. Any company that has a fucked-up sense of morality doesn't deserve to operate. And that's the lesson that I'm learning here. So, I want to give my thanks to all the people that made those documents exposing Orbro Studios and as for Orbro Studios their one and only response cannot be the one and only response they have to speak up and they have to speak up honestly because now after this people are going to have a hard time trusting them they will not try out their products people who have yet to play Sonic Omens will probably not know about the backstory here and hopefully this garners a lot of attention in the right way possible because when people actually learn the truth about why they put out this game or how they put out this game or you know what was going on in the background then I think the situation becomes more clear. Orbro Studios I think cannot be trusted easily. They need to be kept on watch they need to be judged for everything that they do. All these people like John Rice and this JOH guy who use all these social media platforms, whether it be Twitter or Discord, need to be held accountable. Anyone who does this needs to be held accountable. And more and more people are becoming vocal about their experiences with Orboro Studios, that I, which I have been noticing. So, I wouldn't say that I'm convinced, but this is such an eye-opener that is absolutely astonishing. And it kind of reflects the game that they did put out, including the fact that they had a DLC planned, but due to the fans being toxic, according to them, they just decided to cancel it. This makes the team worse, honestly. This makes it so much worse for them. And now, you know, as we're getting closer to 2025, I think it's only going to get worse for them. How many people have yet to play Sonic Omens yet? How many people even know about this? How many people read these documents? How many people are actually aware of what this studio is? Let's take that in consideration after being exposed to Sonic Omens. So just to get this out there because I know that uh, many people won't know about this. In fact, I'll just say it right out front. Um, the game industry as a whole isn't doing so hot. Rather, it's putting the blame on people, releasing unfinished products, or flat out just being ignorant. And I feel like Orbro Studios embodies that tenfold with the social media and just misbehaving the way that they have. I think, and once again, I'm saying this, it's morally correct to investigate these people, to question them, and to keep your distance from them, but at the same time, keep a close eye on them. Like a hawk. Because after all this, I feel like that's the best course of action. Do not get involved with Orbro Studios and keep a close eye on them as much as you can. Observe what they do, keep a long distance, and take everything that they say with a grain of salt. Even if they are antagonizing to the point where they're sending you death threats. This is so unbelievable and I'm glad that I'm getting exposed by this. I'm glad that I'm reading these because this exposes the development. This exposes the intention. But I still need to know more. Why did they make this game? And why did they make it the way that they did? Why would they even bother making a Sonic game if they were going to act like this? Is it because that the Sonic fanbase is just an easily targeted fan base like is the sonic series to them so fucked up that they can just make a fan game out of spite because that makes 
the viewership of fan games even worse. You can get games like Before and After the Sequel or Fallen Star, but then you get games like this. People are just going to play this once and then never touch it again. Or maybe they'll replay it and see if their impressions change. And some people have thought to play this again and see where their standards lie. But at the same time, that replayability isn't going to be as convincing as you think it is. Especially when they claim that the game has gotten harder because that's how they wanted it now. Like, it's absolutely unbelievable. So, always dig for the truth, even if the truth hurts. And here, I wouldn't say that, that the truth hurts. I would go so far to say that the truth actually helps. And that's what I'm seeing here. So, yeah, with all that said, for people who have not played Sonic Omens, um, the game is free to download. Play at your own risk. Develop your own impressions. Do not use these allegations as a way to express your impression of the game itself. Play the game yourself. Develop your own opinions, as many people have done. And as for Ouroboros Studios, it's too late for them to clean up their act because of everything that happened. Because had they just been professional from the get-go, none of this would have ever happened. No documents would have been made. They should have just kept a best profile possible and clean up any misdeeds with these they chose not to do that and instead belittling people using people as a resource basically just not caring and i think that's what i'm seeing here after everything here so this is what's been written this is what's being presented these are not fabricated these were not created using any type of stupid ai no this is real all of this is real. If people are going out of their way to make these documents to expose Ouroboros for the people that they are, then I think it's appropriate to read all of these documents with an open mind. You know, be optimistic as you read it, but at the same time, be realistic. Because this is what's really happening. These people are going out of their way to express their woes about a studio that they worked with, and this is exposing the team. They're being exposed and they will be criticized if they already haven't been criticized already. So with all this in mind, Orbital Studios, the only advice that I can give to them as a studio and as people, get your shit together. And no one should be telling them this because this is a lesson that they should have learned, but instead they refuse to. So now what's left is how they want to operate as a company after all of the mess that they left behind okay they may be bad people and they may have done bad things but as long as they live and breathe they can still find ways to redeem themselves before it's too late of course the internet isn't as forgiving because look what's happened so forgiveness is going to be infeasible for these people the internet does not forget nor forgive it is a black-hearted open space where anything that you say and do can be used against you. All right, there's almost feels like a court case. Anything you say or do can be used against you in the court of law, and that's what I'm seeing here on the internet. Anything that you say or do can and will be used against you, and I think people are still not getting that message. This is the internet. It doesn't matter where you go, YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, Twitter, Discord, it doesn't matter where. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you. And for a game studio in Russia, Orbro Studios, so unbelievable that I have to put that in this context, who don't know how to behave and take criticism to heart, are now finding themselves in a situation that they could barely get out of. This is their doing. This is all on them. And yes, um, like I said, I don't point fingers. I'm only doing this to figure out what's been going on here. And if Ouroboros is the cause of it, they need to be the ones to clean it up. Because in the end, it all goes back to them. They're the ones who made all this possible. They're the ones that made Sonic Omens. They're the ones with the Twitter and Discord accounts. They're the ones who are pointing the finger at people like Froco, like Poncho, like Wildberry here. They are the ones responsible 
for all of this and it is their responsibility to clean up everything that they left behind failing that they can disperse and not work on anything ever again no one is going to give them money no one is going to trade out their products everyone is going to label them a fraud for anyone that delved deep in the studios history this is all on them and now they have to clean themselves up which is going to be a very excruciating difficult task to do especially on the internet so Orbro Studios I don't even regret saying this but um, until this whole situation improves there is absolutely no reason for you to be a studio anymore <laughs>